So go look at you. You're listening to the Jersey Tuck Podcast. Call the cops. Uh, I'm about to right now. Hello out there. It is March 24th, and you're listening to the Jersey Tuck podcast, where we have just called the police. This evening, we have a uh, healthy roster once again. We're here with all five starters. We got Tyrell, Mitch, Josh, and Fred, and myself. And um, make sure you follow us on Spotify, subscribe on YouTube, and send us a tweet every now and then at the Jersey Tuck um this week we dropped some new fresh content on youtube as always we are gotta be honest we are uh we're blessing the people with the cdps we got uh two more crack that packs open this week um mitch opened a between the pipes goalie set which is pretty cool to see um mitch was a little bit uh a little bit bummed about one particular thing in the in the box but uh it's well worth a watch either way. He got some cool shit in there. Um, anything you want to mention, Mitch, about the the your uh, CDP video? Uh, no, not really. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> nothing to see there. Oh, oh go watch it. I mean, <laughs> it's it is what it is. I mean, it's been it's usually a good product towards me. Maybe not so much this time around, but there are some decent cool hits. I mean, it's if you like if you like goalies and if you like things of all uh, of all. Uh, uh, decades and different mm-hmm. go- genres get, of gold, gold ending. Would you get a Ben Scribbins card or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's right. Actually, you know, I'm surprised I didn't, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, a couple things. Mitch uh, really enjoyed some of the uh, names of the other franchises. What was the league that was involved besides the uh, NHL, Mitch? They do, uh, they do, uh, it's called the, there's a little a line in it, I guess, like, um, insert card. It's called the Rival League, and it's a bunch of uh, WHA goalies. Mm-hmm. So they had some cool stuff, man. There's the, my WHA had some sick team names and logos. Cleveland mm-hmm. Crusaders. Yeah. Wow. Syracuse Crunch. That's an AHL team. Yeah, man. Oh, still my bad. Team, yeah. My bad. Shout out no, to the but Crunch. Like it was, but it's probably like you see a lot of like how those teams move around, and obviously you had like the Oilers and Jets that used to be in there. There was another one too. Uh, was it the Toronto Sting? I can't remember or something like oh, that. Oh, Sting. Interesting. I, or something like that. I can't remember. Can't quite remember, mm-hmm. but I do know you pulled a Brian Elliott. That was kind of cool. Uh, and a Varlamov, but his first name was spelt wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, early please on. Tell, that please one. tell me it was missing. Please tell me. S E M E N. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. Say, please tell me it's missing the line. Seaman Varlamov. Seaman Varlamov. Mr. Seaman. <laughs> I think I think there was a nice bit of product like that when his first when he first started that did that and I don't know why I think they you know would look a bit harder but yeah, <laughs> Mr. Seaman. Unfortunately, no John Moonlight in that. Uh, in that <laughs> no box, John though. Moonlight. Um, I sh- I'll have another crack that pack coming up the next week I'd say too because uh, series two just uh, yep. Overdeck series two just dropped so I got I had a pre order so I'll be picking Ooh. that up tomorrow. Freaking awesome, fantastic, and uh, I also opened a pack of 2020, 2021 uh hoops a uh, blaster box that was also a lot of fun so go check those out if you haven't done so already and there's more coming down the pipeline so look out for them uh before we get into the meat of this show guess what guys what the rockets gotta win (laughs) the rockets got a win it had to be against the raps too of course yeah (laughs) please enlighten me let me know like how close like what was the what's the all-time longest losing streak 26 yeah okay so they were they were six off from it eh yeah uh i believe i'm not sure if they set a franchise record but i think it was where they were tied for the franchise yeah i think franchise record was 18 right oh shit so they did break it yeah (laughs) i I believe i also read another stat that they're the only team that has 
recorded a 20 plus game win streak and a 20 plus game losing streak in the same Ouch. season yeah. in the same season <laughs> so that that is not the steamy stat that's a, that's not a very steamy stat at all but, uh, not for me anyways um uh, i was gonna say alex too when i was looking into it i'm pretty sure one of the teams with the longest streak or one of the or up there longest streak was uh one of lebron james's Cavs uh teams really yeah, I'm pretty sure if I read for that losing? correctly. Yeah, for a losing wow. streak. Ooh, I did not know that. Now, that was definitely early, early Cavs. Like, right, but yeah, course, for sure. Then, but. Um, uh, let's just take a listen to the final couple of seconds of the call. One thing that isn't in this audio clip that Bill Wor- Bill Worrell, the uh, Rockets broadcaster, said as soon as the uh, time was ticking out, he was like, the witch is dead. <laughs> in like a, a nice, in like a classic Houston accent. The witch is dead. The witch. <laughs> but uh, here it is. Everybody here in Toyota Center on their feet as the Rockets' streak is over at 20. And now the Toronto Raptors have the longest streak. This will be their ninth <laughs> loss in a row. I'm so happy for Steven Silas. I can't tell you. It's going to be a much happier press conference tonight. So, uh, yeah, that's another thing about the uh, that particular <laughs> series of events. The Raptors actually had the longest streak there now. Oh, shit. Yeah. But, that's it. But, uh, Everyone's getting traded. Yeah, yeah tempers are boiling up. over. Yeah, temp- tempers are boiling over uh, in Raptors land. Just had Hold to get up. that off the... Uh, just had to get that off the chest at the beginning of the show because must feel good, eh? It must does. Feel cathartic. Good. It does. It very. A couple people on the pod are very happy about that one, uh, and we'll so, talk about it more as the show go or uh, we get more into the show. Are you gonna say some, Josh? I was just gonna say like, uh, and I think the news like because today um, there was well, you, I, I mentioned it I think earlier like the, the 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 news break about like Pascal Siakam's choice words, yes, for um, for Nick Nurse. I yep. don't know if it was after that game. I think it was after the uh, the previous Prior, game. Yeah, it might. Have but been I think that it one. I I think it might have been that one. But uh, but, but yeah. So score just said like Nick. I think Nick Nurse just acknowledged that it actually happened because the Raptors were were kind of denying it. Like the actual team was denying it, but Nick Nurse himself acknowledged. Yeah, like, we ah. can chat about that a little bit. I mean, he was he was sidelined, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, and according to the score, he got personal and lines were crossed during the exchange with head coach, head coach Nick Nurse after he was benched versus the Cavs. Went beyond standard cursing, said Michael Grange of TSN. Beyond standard cursing. Did he give him the old C word or something? Yeah, it's, oh, it's like, yeah. Must have been something like that. No, I, I'd say he definitely made personal digs. Personal digs, for sure. Probably, something yeah, about yeah. something personal. That, you gotta um, go. You gotta cross the line pretty bad for your own organization that fine you for cursing yeah, out your coach like, that's wild k dude like, that's a hefty fine yeah. like yeah. something about his family or something some of mm. his family or relationships or yeah something but um yeah something I, personal. i found it so wild when i was looking at it in uh mitch was the one that dropped it or a couple guys dropped it in the show notes i i read the first little bit i was like oh you fi- you got fined after a frustrating game and then i it wasn't until afterwards that i saw it was against nick nurse and i was like that's not something you see every day. That, no, and, no, and it's indicative of what's going on in Raptors land right now. Like, f- holy moly, the drama. Rockets broke the Raptors. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. They're gonna blow it up. They're... I just keep thinking about like what like gets said in a hockey game. Like, you think of all those coaches, man. Like, no man. one would say anything. It's like, yeah, it's just, it is what it is. But in the NBA, you get fined for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but players are saying personal shit all the time. That's what makes me think that I'm sure. NBA players and coaches get into it all the time too and say shit. That's what makes me think that this is probably stuff or something said you never hear a player do or cross regards to crossing the line. I mean, he definitely dug deep on some whatever he said to Nick Nurse. Yeah, I'm he, so he curious, knew something. Man. Yeah. I really want to know. And it's, it's that's something we'll probably never find out because I'm thinking like that was a, some, a bit of personal a personal information between the team and the coach so mm-hmm. i don't know it could happen during their championship era like something that happened then like a reference whatever something happened then mm-hmm. but anyways it's um 
it's a very strange thing to see. I can't say I've ever seen it before. Uh, getting fined for harping on your own your own uh, squad. Very strange. Yeah, I mean, it's that's usually something to a team would try and keep under wraps and out of the yeah. media and stuff like that and yeah. keep it in the locker room. So, I mean, that just makes me think that this was probably pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> and, like, I don't even have any guesses as to what it would be. I just know some, yeah. something personal, that's all. Because, like, publicly, NBA players have said some pretty, like, hecked up shit. Like, oh, yeah. Remember, like, KG on the daily. Just... <laughs> He, you guys remember when Carmelo stood outside the locker room and wanted to fight KG after a game? <laughs> there was a few of those. I think what was it? Uh, there, He's, there was a Clippers says, squad with C, with Chris Paul. I think it was when Houston played the Clippers afterwards. They like they did a stakeout at, the, at their locker room or something like that. In the tunnel, I don't know. There, yeah, there's a tunnel involved, and Chris Paul like, knew like back ways. I don't know. <laughs> New secret tunnels. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that, that, that long ago. Actually, I don't know what was on. The yeah, I there. think it was uh, Chris Paul's first year in Houston, because uh, it was that Clippers feud, or like mm. him and I don't know Blake or DeAndre or something. Um, so let's move to the NHL. We have another fun topic uh, that happened. Uh, let's see, yesterday. I guess, or yeah, that's when the news broke. I'm not sure if that's when the game was, but uh, was. referee Tim Peel will no longer be working NHL games now or in the future. Danny Murphy of Icon Sports Wire. So, what happened was essentially there was a hot mic on the broadcast. I guess, uh, guys, it's one of those mics where you do a penalty call. Yeah, like the ref it, mic. Yeah, it had to be because it was so clear. It was. Yeah. It was almost direct into the feed. It was kind of weird, actually. <laughs> I know. It was strange. I know. Um, so I'll just uh, play a little that little clip here now from the broadcast, and we'll uh, do a little reaction to it. It wasn't much, but I wanted to get a fucking penalty yeah, against Nashville early in the... Like... <laughs> <laughs> Let's just have one more quick listen. It wasn't much, but I wanted to get a fucking penalty yeah, against Nashville early in the... Like, as, as Mitch said, it sounds like he's on the broadcast. Yes. Yeah. Like, so clear. It's so funny. It's very, very hot mic. Very yeah. hot. The, mic. the hottest. The hottest mic. That's not even, it doesn't even sound like it's from the distance. It's just so funny because uh, it's, he must it's have, like, like touched he, his he's little little like right here. Like, <laughs> it was like, Hey. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I know it wasn't much, but I really wanted to get a fucking penalty. Guys, does he not sound loaded? Pierre Maguire might as well between the benches. He reach in and grab the mic for Pierre Maguire. <laughs> yeah, get exactly. it to the camera and go. Yeah, I just wanted to bring over. It wasn't much, but does he like? Listen, does he not sound drunk? It wasn't much, but I wanted to get a fucking penalty against Nashville early in. the He's uh, either drunk or from Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get a fucking penalty in. It's like, dude. <laughs> it probably was. It's so funny because that's something he's saying on the ice. I like, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. And like, there's, uh, there's no justification there. There's no justification oh, yeah. for that. And obviously the NHL made swift action and said um, he's not playing anymore. They made sure to clarify, oh. we'll no longer be working NHL games now or in the future. So, so. Just, just to kind of... I think it was very lucky for the NHL. I don't want to say lucky because it was Tim Peel, but he was to retire literally next month. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. He's an older fellow. So yeah. I think they quite literally made an example of him, but it was mm -hmm. almost convenient because yeah. they're like, you know what? Because I think there's a there's a bit of a deeper thing here. I think in culture for hockey, there's 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 always been what you call the even up call, which is yeah. I hate it. Yeah. But, yeah. Up call. It's a makeup it's a, call. The makeup call, like they do it all the time, and they they always like kind of tip the scale, balance yeah. the game instead yeah. of just calling the rule book. Yeah, they're always kind of leaning one way or the other just to kind of make it even. Um, but I think in a world now where sports betting and the NHL is really trying to get um involved in that as well, just for, as another revenue stream. Yes, uh, it's it's something that's completely unacceptable, right? Because if you have, if you have referees and especially now that he's pretty much acknowledged it on live air, if right. you have a referee saying like, I'm, I'm controlling the outcome of the game. Yeah. 
Whew. Like that's a big red alert for sports betting, right? And oh, it's yeah. pretty, it's pretty straight up what he's saying. He's like, mm. I just wanted to throw one their way. There's no justification yeah. on the call. No, I just want to read a quick quote from, um, from him. Uh, he was, uh, coach John Hines was asked about the hot mic after the game. I think the situation is what it is. Classic quote. I think yeah. from our perspective, it probably doesn't matter how I feel about it in general, but the referees are employees of the league. And rather than me comment, I think it's an issue that the league will have to take care of. So in a long winded way, no comment. Pretty yeah, much. pretty yeah. much. It's such a hockey answer. It is. <laughs> that we just what dance was the around score it. at that point? I can't even remember. I don't know. I think Nashville went on to win the game. Two nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, just to kind of reiterate too on that, we we don't have the full context of what he was talking about, what he was saying. And for a makeup call, essentially, what might have happened earlier in that game is they might have made a call against Nashville earlier or against Detroit earlier that after thinking about it or probably seeing a few replays, they're like, okay, that was soft or that was a chintzy call. Right. And that's probably where what they were talking about, Mm -hmm. what that came from. But either way, like you said, I mean, your job is to call the rule book. doesn't matter if you made a mistake. Don't try and make something or call something that's not there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, I don't know. But, I mean, that's honestly – that's. It's it's crazy to hear someone saying that a ref on the yes. ice, but at the same time, like, like we know every single on. yeah mm-hmm. every single yeah. player and everyone knows it goes on. It's been going on forever. Like no one's shocked or surprised. It's just finally got caught and yeah. red handed yeah. pretty much, and now they have to deal with it. It's it's been such a deep rooted part of hockey anyway for the longest, forever, forever. Like they've oh, always yeah. called games that way. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy for a commentator or even play by play. It's just like, oh, that's a makeup call. Oh, that, right. that's a total makeup yeah. call, kind of thing like that. And everyone's like, yeah, that's, and like, that's it. And it goes on. But I don't know. I think if there's almost like, it's almost like a realization kind of scenario now where like, you know, it's kind of happening, but like, you can't really pinpoint and say, yeah, you can kind of, oh, it's usually always like, yeah, you can kind of see it. Or like, <laughs> how like many... you can't really argue it. But now you're how... saying, okay, yeah, he clearly, he got caught with a smoking gun. He was clearly going yeah. out of his way and looking for something to make a call even like guys how many how many times have you watched a game like and your your team is the one that maybe had like penalties to start the game maybe they're up by a goal and you're like i know it's coming yeah like it's coming like the other team is going to get a power play in the next like few minutes and then it happens and you're like and it's usually the most crappiest call yeah like it's like an interference call like actually it's it always early... an interference call yeah it's, it's always interference. Stupid... yeah and it, it happened earlier in the season and that's the one where uh sheldon keith actually got fined yeah Right, because Sheldon Keith like straight up, and he, you could hear him like you you do the lip reading, and <laughs> they actually translated it. And he was screaming at the ref, and he's like, "Hey, hey, come here!" He's like, "It happens fifty fucking times in a game, and you call it now. It's yeah. like two minutes left in the third period." Yeah, that's yeah, when he pretty exactly. much yelled at him. You call it now, and he's just like yelling at him. And apparently, like right. he got a bench minor for it. Right. They gave him a second penalty because he was screaming at the ref. I, I I hate that stuff. I think just call it a freaking rule book, man. It's yeah. just. It's true. You can always look at it the other way too. There's calls that they just don't call. Like it's yeah. a blatant trip. They're like, yeah, eh, let like that well, one slide. Cross checks in front of the net, man. I'm yeah. fine for them either going, letting stuff go, or calling it extremely strict. As long as they're consistent, consistent. with it the entire game. Don't pick mm. and choose what you call. Call it yeah. one way or the other. Don't go swinging back and forward. It's it just you, the players that frustrates yeah. the players the most is they don't know what they can and can't they, do. Exactly. All right, let's Dave. get into goalie interference. Oh, <laughs> just God. joking. Just oh. joking. Not Dave, right uh, now. <laughs> it, it's funny, Fred, or uh, uh, Mitch, like D- Dave Poulin um, on TSM was kind of saying that today. I was listening to him, and he was saying, like, back in the day, it was a little bit easier to kind of, it, like, it was more like what you just said, like consistency, because you'd have one referee. Right. And, like, yeah. you always knew what mm. game you were getting into because you'd mm. be like, you had a rapport with the referee. Right. Yeah. So you knew how it was going to get called. So like you go into the game knowing like oh no cross checks are gonna get called this game right you know that you know what I mean you knew but now because they match two referees and it's always like alternating it you, you can never really tell yeah. one referee calls A B and doesn't call C right. and then the other referee calls like A doesn't call B but calls C yeah and, so and always, like, the chairs exa- and exactly and they won't ever like if one ref sees it one way and the ref sees it the other if one makes it makes the call the other is not going to correct or disagree yeah. with them they just roll with it they just roll mm-hmm. with each other's calls unless unless it's completely blatant he says no i actually saw this and like you might have just saw this from your angle 
and they're like, oh, okay, that's fine. But that rarely happens. It's always it doesn't matter if one ref likes to call something one way and the other calls the other. If one ref makes a call, the other's not arguing with it. <laughs> one thing I wanted to bring up. It's funny to me. Like I think uh, somewhere in the quote in the hot mic, he says like uh, that was a bit of a weak call, and then he goes on. Yeah, but yeah. It's it's so funny because the NHL is. Uh, it said like we're opening an investigation to see if the punishment. <laughs> it's like. Uh, why do you need an investigation? He's confessing to a crime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 What are you <laughs> investigating? <laughs> it's all right there. It's he's standing the there. He's standing there with the smoking gun. Yeah, yeah. It, it just goes to like a uh, it wasn't whatever. Me. It goes to New York. Uh, <laughs> is that where head office is? I think in in the NHL. Yeah. But it goes yeah, to right. some office. Some dude on a monitor. He's just like watching the watching the Twitter video that I just watched. He's like. <laughs> yeah, that, was, <laughs> that is what he said. <laughs> and this guy gets paid like a ton yeah. of money. Oh, I nailed that. I nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> but I was saying though, uh, this I think even more so now puts re- refing is a hard job. It's like such Absolutely. a s- scrutinized hard, and a hard job in any league. No one, no one likes refs. No, and they, they have no fans. Th- the issue is now this takes away even more of the benefit of the doubt from refs now mm-hmm. yeah it hurts uh, a bit they're not going to get the benefit of the doubt now you're going to have people questioning their methods and their reasoning for calls now so much more because it is completely out there that they do make up calls because well, he felt so comfortable doing it and obviously he's yeah. worked with others so yeah correct well, Tim... me if... Sorry, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, no, go I was ahead say, well, correct me if i'm wrong like like because I know basketball does this, but like, is hockey the, one of the only sports where referees actually don't answer for anything? Like, they don't ever have to. There's no like, there's no report after about blown calls. Like in basketball, last two minutes. Like, yeah, they, they'll actually uh, they'll actually acknowledge if if a call was incorrect and whatnot, right? Yeah, and some people some people th- like that could be a good and a bad thing. That some people think it hurts their. Uh, the the integrity of the referees but i don't know i think it's i think it's transparent and it's good but obviously yeah for sure yeah. and it, it makes people mad more I, more often than not but that's just how it is right it, it's acknowledging mm-hmm. the mistake and then you got a b- bunch of people saying oh i would have won the game if these refs didn't fuck up but at least they're acknowledging the mistake right yeah so they're they're uh they're answering for it to some degree mm-hmm. so there is that just, just to kind of further rate on Tim Peel, and I know Fred was talking about me, Fred, and Josh were kind of saying before Tim Peel. I don't know, maybe it's just you know, bad. He's been around for so long. You're around long enough. You you have bad come uh, interactions with refs, but man, like Fred as a Habs fan, Josh as a Leafs fan, me as Colorado fan. I think we've all had the point where we feel like Tim Peel hurts a team your team when he's <laughs> he refing. Yeah, he was really peeled like, the team. Oh, he's, <laughs> Game- he peels your team. Game five, game five against Columbus in the play-in, he was the the referee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's. I'm yeah. pretty sure. I remember someone on Twitter, and I'm pretty sure it was Tim Peel. I don't quote me on this, but I remember someone like running stats on like the uh, uh, penalties per average per game by ref and Tim Peel wow. for Colorado. Uh, like wow. he, he yeah. hammers them. He hammers them. <laughs> let's uh let's take a quick pivot over to a topic that no one talks about ever in media lebron james um a bro he has Ooh. become part owner of the boston red sox that is news that came out of nowhere for me that, that blew my mind yeah. uh <laughs> it's like, of course bit, he did a bit weird like um that's not a small team. No, <laughs> no. no. Like, that's top two teams. Yeah, yeah that's, right? that's not like I bought the Arizona Coyotes or like yeah, the Charlotte yeah. Hornets. Yeah. <laughs> like... So this is uh, so LeBron and longtime business partner Maverick Carter are now partners in the Fenway Sports Group. That's a humongous ownership group. Um, exact portion of ownership has not been revealed, and um, yeah, it's a it's a it's it's one of those things that just came out of nowhere. Because yeah obviously he's it's a conflict of interest it's against regulation he's he has aspirations to own an nba team at some point Mm -hmm. uh but this is basically him saying all right i have ownership of a humongous storied franchise i'm coming nba as soon as i as soon as i play a season with my son i'm gone (laughs) i'm owning a team and uh it's gonna be spooky uh he he has stated i got so much to give to the game i know what it takes to win at this level 
I know talent, and I know how to run a business well. So that is my goal. My goal is to own an NBA franchise, and you know it'll be sooner rather than later. That is from Reuter Sports. So Which one there you go. Own? Well, he's almost a billionaire now, so or if not already, like so. Yeah. He can yeah. very well do it. I already know which one he's gonna own. The Charlotte. He's always, oh wait, no, that's he's MJ's al- team. No, he's all he's always owned them on the court. So why not just own the Raptors? Hey, just buy the Raptors. <laughs> <laughs> and just oh, own them off the court too. Man. Just <laughs> just change the team name to Lebronto. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> Lebronto Raptors. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that, that their fans were just like, "Fuck this, I'm done." <laughs> if they're not doing that now, they're done. Um. Let's take a quick move over to our uh, latest and greatest segment. That stat is steamy. The steamy stat. This is the steamy stat, where we steamy take a, uh, a stat that stood out from us, stood out to us uh, over the week, and uh, have a little chat about it, see, uh, see what sport it came from. The reactions uh, across the panel. Fred, you have a steamy yes. stat this week. I do. And it's uh, it's a good one. We're going to the MLB with this one. It's actually the 20 year anniversary where Randy Johnson threw a fastball and hit a bird. No way. No way. Yes, man. And it's only happened twice that I could find that it actually got hit by a pitch, but it's the one that he actually killed it. And it was like the perfect explosion. It exploded. It exploded. Do you remember that? Like it was, it was yeah. crazy. The fact that you're saying it happened twice blows my mind. Let I know. Once. Yeah. 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 Cause I had to go diving after I, I, I noticed like, well, I seen the video <laughs> pop up and I was like, man, how many times does this happen? And one where I think it hit like a wing or something during a pitch but right. the randy johnson one was so uh, fred did the deep dive on the bird stats <laughs> the bird stats what type of bird were they <laughs> was it a cormorant yeah. or, a, or a, a raven a pigeon it's a mocking bird <laughs> it's a mocking bird it's a 103 it, kilometer hour i think pitch. the one he hit was a dog it, it was, was white really? wasn't it was, it was white it was that's awful it was a white explosion. Yeah. It was a seagull. <laughs> or, yeah, or a seagull, but I think it might have a been pi- a dove. A pigeon. Can you imagine a dove? Like, what are you doing? How awful. Like- <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? You're going to hell now. But, like, uh, now I could be wrong, but I know it was a white explosion of feathers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just and up. I, I pre- it was like a fastball right down the mm. middle. And You're talking about a it. Randy Johnson fastball. Like, <laughs> whew, man, that guy. <laughs> Crazy. Imagine if you're the catcher and you catch the ball and the bird. <laughs> you just yeah. ah! <laughs> No. Wouldn't be surprised if the end of the game. It's the ball. It's just got a wing sticking out of the ball. And, like and it lost the blood all spatter. feathers too. The blood spatter like goes through the catcher's helmet, so it's just like a great uh, it's like <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like paintball. Yeah. Yeah. How, how does that happen though? Is the bird just like it dive just, it literally yeah. flew right by the, the straight across the glove? It was just a that, that is bird a one went billion. Like a bird was just... having a bad day. Like yeah. it you know what it did? Wrong turn. Guys, you know what happened? It saw yeah. the sunflower seeds that players are spitting out of their mouth all the time. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. Hell yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. That's yeah. what it is. That poor bird. That yeah, poor dog. Never had chance. No chance. He gone. All right. <laughs> yeah. That is an excellent stat. Next, uh, one. I have a steamy Steve. stat uh, that I wanted to mention. Um, Anthony Edwards is the third youngest player to score 40 plus. Um, so that was pretty cool. A uh, 30 plus, well, where's the second part of my steamy stat? This isn't that steamy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I see a little bit of steam, I'm it's thinking, misty. It's, like, it's, it's a sizzle. This yeah. is my stat. There's a sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is my stat. I think it's under 21 years. We'll we'll go back to that. We'll go back to it. But I I have a backup steamy stat because I, I botched my first one real bad. <laughs> <laughs> so here here it is. The Rockets, as everyone know knows, have a 20 game or had a 20 game losing streak, but they are not the worst team in the NBA. The Minnesota Timberwolves still have a worse record. Isn't that wild? That's crazy. That's insane. 
That is crazy. So all you're telling me is that the Minnesota Timberwolves have been more consistently shitty. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like we got, it sounds like we got competition for that first overall pick is what you're saying. There you go. Yeah. I don't I don't understand how they're so bad still though. Do you remember when they had that streak yeah. of pie picks? Yep. And making trades to be a good team and they just still never were? And mm-hmm. none of those players are on that team anymore. I just I don't understand. I don't know. Bad drafting. D- D'Angelo Russell was good. Like yeah, yeah, and it was like he was really when he was on the like Nets. Season. When he yeah. was on the Nets, he had an All Star season. So they drafted Wiggins first overall, didn't they? Yeah, next to Le- LeBron James or Kobe. Sorry, next Kobe. Because of Wiggins and Bennett, a Canadian is never going to get picked first overall again. <laughs> oh yeah, no. yeah, yeah. they was, ruined was, that for all Canadians. Was Wiggins first overall? He was. Uh, I thought he, yeah, he was first. Mm, he was first. That doesn't surprise me. I know yeah. people. I know, like, pe- I could have swore he was. The amount of hype for Wiggins was. I, I feel huge. bad for Bennett because he did not want to be like. He was like, "Why am I here? I am not yeah. a first overall pick." Yeah, that was just that was forced on him. The bad. A the, bit more humble. Yeah, no, that was yeah, that was a weird pick for them to take Bennett. Everyone was like, oh, "Okay, sure, give her." Do you have well, the draft there, Mitch? I'm trying to find it. Because if you pull it up, I really want to know who got taken around. Yeah. Him. 2014 draft round one pick one yeah uh so who, who got taken second third fourth fifth give us the top five let's your... do top five i want to see who else is there it was wiggins then your mother <laughs> okay <laughs> she can play a bit of baller but she's a baller baller baller, baller. uh let's see okay so wiggins was first overall yeah uh J- barry parker was second overall by the Bucks. Oh shit! Bad pick too. Joel Ugh. Embiid was third overall for the Sixers. There you go. Ooh. Joel Aaron, Embiid. Aaron Gordon fourth overall for the Magic, and Marcus Smart was sixth overall for the Celtics. Jeez. That, so ooh, that three, Jabari Parker pick. Yes. Yeah. Three, three, four, and five should have went one, two, and three. Yeah. Well, at least the Bucks had Giannis like way deep, so uh, can't really jo- trip on too much. Jokic was in that draft. No. See, crazy. Forty-first overall by the Nuggets. I actually didn't know Jokic was drafted that deep. I mean, that's insane. But anyways, to... I re- do the Bennett one. To redeem... <laughs> while Mitch is looking that up, to redeem my steamy stat. It's just straight up that. It's Anthony Edwards is the third youngest player to score 40-plus. Behind LeBron James and Kevin Durant. That's so impressive. Though. Good, yeah. Really good company, man. Yeah. That is good company. <laughs> really good company. And he's looking so. crazy right now with those vicious dunks. And he might take over rookie of the year. He might uh, He might take that spot now that Lamelo's injured. Did Brandon oh, James too over bad, man. a crazy amount, or was he over twenty one? Uh, in this like third game, I thought he scored fifty. Really? Yeah. It's not a second. I haven't heard about Brandon Jennings in years. Ooh. No. Ben Bennett drafts a bit of a rough one too. Ooh, one give, give me the, give me right, the top so, five. Give so Bennett five. was twenty thirteen. So Bennett and Wiggins went back to back first yeah. overall. Oh uh, Canada. Oh Canada. So Bennett <laughs> was one, obviously to the cat. <laughs> Ben went to the Cavs, first overall. Victor uh, Oladipo went to the Magic, second overall. Nice. CJ McCollum. Uh, McCollum cool. went to the Trailblazers, third overall. Solid. Micro- Michael Carter-Williams went to the 76ers. Uh, no, wait. These aren't in order. The last drafted... Okay, no way. Okay, so, I mean, these might be notable <laughs> picks because the first two are in order, but then it says CJ McCollum was 10th uh, by the highlights. Oh, my God. Draft, I guess. So, no one, no one of notability got taken from 2 to 10. Well, he- 10. here's this one. Giannis was in that. <laughs> oh. Was in that <laughs> yeah. he went 15th to the box. 15th. Oh, my God. Crazy. I just want to mention one more uh, steamy stat before we moved on. Uh, okay. In the – this isn't – I mean, if anyone's our March Madness expert, it's Fred. Fred's been watching those March Madness games, but I just wanted to say a quick March Madness stat. The odds of filling out a perfect March Madness bracket is 1 in 9.2 quintillion. What? That's crazy. Mine's yes, still man. perfect. <laughs> I was telling you, man. You the third chance the lottery. So, yeah. Oh, wait, it was you. Yes, it was you last. Uh, that I was trying to figure out who told me that, but, yep, sure enough, that's yeah. it's just that bad, which is pretty hey, wild. That- Mitch's That's, comment was so nonchalant. It's near impossible. It's crazy. It's, Mine's it's, still perfect. That's uh, nuts. I oh, mean, I'm gonna be. I'm really rolling lucky dice. It's not like after the second day, my two picks for the finals were already eliminated. No, that didn't happen <laughs> at all. 
<laughs> so let's take a quick look. Uh, as we all know, in or on the 25th, uh, sure, all these trades could be, could be done by the time this podcast uh, it is up. Probably not. We'll get it up a little bit sooner than that. But uh, exciting times in the NBA. I mean, the trade targets aren't that exciting, but the deadline is coming up on the 25th, likely 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, Tyrell, I wanted to ask you, is there anyone that you think 100% without a doubt is getting moved? Oladipo. Good pick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good pick. Oladipo. It's it's funny you say that because uh, Steven Silas just said just before we, re- we started recording the show, actually, that he is out for tonight for personal reasons. I'm seeing a couple mixed reports. Uh, one is saying he's mourning a friend's, or, or a loss of a friend's father or something like that, but uh, who really knows uh, at this point. Uh, he no. was out the game before, and there's been rumors surrounding him for a, uh, basically all the way up until uh, the deadline. Not sure which team takes him on. There's definitely. I mean, that's there's, what I was gonna say. Like, what team would go yeah, after him? Think? Um, would need that. I heard. Who did I hear was interested in Victor Oladipo? Um, Miami. Yes. Yes, Miami. That's who it was. So, what would be the team? Like, what would be the NBA equivalent right now to like the TSN trade bait board? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, what? It, like, who great would be question. like? Those top, like, I want to know, like, who's on that block. Well, it's like, funny every you year said TSN, that because I got, a little, go. uh, I got a little uh, couple of names here that we can. Just now, again, ooh. I said as we go in, it's it's not the sexiest names in the NBA. Yeah. But um, Drummond is there. Apparently, he's 50-50. He's still sitting for the Cavs. Remember, we, we talked about it a couple podcasts ago. Um, they agreed, basically agreed to part ways and said, we, uh, we were talking about the Draymond quote. So he's, yeah. he's still sitting, I think, which is wild. Did uh, they buy him out yet? Oh, no, you're right, Tyrell. He's been bought out. I'm, I'm pretty sure oh, he's been bought out. Okay, okay, okay. Lakers want him for their uh, starting spot. Yes, and right and, here. and that was uh, that's the rumor that he's uh, he's going over to Lakers. Who? That's a uh, that's a scary squad. Lakers are scary as it is. So uh, to see him go there would be mm-hmm. very spooky. That's a dude that hauls in rebounds like something else uh more two names for uh for our residents of the pod norman powell and kyle lowry yeah yeah um it's been said that lowry might go to either the sixers or the heat the heat are looking for just to just you know round out their roster uh try to compete again for championship um and the sixers doing the same thing and uh the sixers are or philadelphia is kyle lowry's hometown so I could mm-hmm. really see him going to Philly. Yeah. Like, it just makes a lot of sense. And also, like, I'm trying to think of who else. Because I think him with Simmons and Embiid would be pretty solid. Like, Lowry's always been, like, a really, really good complimentary player. Like, he's, he's like, a top – like, it's it's kind of um, – He's a good quarterback. He's a good quarterback. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like – and 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 he takes the most charges. <laughs> and he, and he yeah, right? like, he, he'd be a good leader too, and kind of yeah. like pillar. You know, he's yeah. obviously from Philly, so that would help a lot. But I, I think like as a leadership role for yeah. like Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid specifically, you know, to kind doesn't of have to go out there and drop twenty. Yeah. Go go ahead, Tyrell. Sorry. No, yeah, he just doesn't have to go out there and drop twenty. You know, he can yeah just take on more of the mentor role but exactly. still you know if he needed to he can still score you know still has a couple of years left yeah i think he's got a uh i think he's got a reputation of being a bit of a glue guy too mm-hmm. so it's kind of like one of those i think it would be a great destination for him just to kind of be that like you know a teammate guy especially for like planning for a playoff run because his contract's up this year right it's expiring he's he's asking for two years if i yeah if i read correctly he's asking for two years I mm-hmm. think it's up once next season's up. Could be wrong on that one. But uh, I know it's a pricey contract. Um, he wants 50 mil over two years, I think. But that's... Me too. We got... Um, we I got, do too. <laughs> we got Aaron Gordon. He, uh, he's he been uh, he's been discussed a lot, uh, this trade deadline. It's so funny because like Aaron Gordon's like, eh. Yeah. He's all right. I don't yeah, I, mean, I, I, I the only thing I think of when I think of Aaron Gordon dunk. is dunk contest. Yeah, that's yeah. Really good. <laughs> yeah. No. He formally requested a trade, actually, I think. He but ever, everyone's it's like Aaron Gordon, so everyone's like, 
who cares? <laughs> Shut up, Aaron Gordon. Who cares? <laughs> like, <laughs> get out of here. Yeah, you get out of here, Aaron. Yeah, you don't push us over the top by add, by getting added to our team. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> we'll I, trade uh, if you want. I don't mean to like pull it back the other way. No, go for but it. I think we kind of glossed right over it. I actually think out of the Raptors players that are on the block, because I still think there's a good chance that Lowry stays. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I've heard Toronto. that too. Here. I think I think actually Norm Powell is the he bigger is, one. He is the most likely, and that's what I'm hearing too, Josh. He's yeah. the most likely to be traded over, even over Lowry. Yeah, I think he's the more likely. One. Interesting. And where's the fit for that? Apparently, the Knicks are interested in Norm Powell. Interesting. The Knickerbockers. The Knickerbockers. The yeah. old Knickers. The old. <laughs> the Knicks have an All Star this year. Isn't that weird to yeah. say? That's How long has it been? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, Mello? Carmelo, I guess? Yeah, it would be Mello. Uh, but yeah, with Aaron Gordon, he has a bunch of teams that are interested in him. As a Rockets fan, uh, I've heard buzz that Houston wants him. I want nothing to do with that because it's super no. ho-hum. I don't, think it's a, a, <laughs> I don't think the contract is too daunting, but I, I, I'd have to get someone to double-check me on that. Um, the team that's most interested in him is the Celtics, actually. And mm. apparently they're talking about a swap with Marcus Swar- Marcus Smart, and like that does not seem like a good move to me. No, not at all. At all, because like that Mar- seems like a losing end. Marcus Smart <laughs> is a he's he's kind of like their locker room guy. Like he, yeah. they're going through a tough time right now, and I, I would say they kind of need him to to you know reorganize the troops. The Celtics are on a weird run right he now. He killed. Man. He killed the Raptors in the bubble. Marcus Smart wasn't it? Wasn't it Smart dropping I threes? I can't recall. Yeah, he killed the Raptors in the bubble when they played Celtics. Some other uh, some other names okay. here are Lonzo Ball. He's been bounced around. Um... Ha! <laughs> 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 ah, that's so funny. Uh, uh, you what? Caught the punny. What? Oh, you. Oh, you I didn't, didn't even you notice didn't, that. You didn't even intend <laughs> what? it. Come on, Buzz. I was, <laughs> there was quite literally no pun intended. That, that, wow. That, <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to say anything. I was, I was like, <laughs> it's so funny because like I was I was hearing you guys laugh. I was like, did they c- get him confused with Lamelo? Like, I, but just, no, it went right uh, over my head. That's get it because ball testicles. <laughs> 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 So um, they're uh, the Pelicans are kind of looking to dump his contract. They're uh, they've kind of you know gave hints that he's not part of their future. Uh, what if he goes to the Raps, guys? No, man. I don't know. I'm not. I, I don't see it. Did you know that Magic Johnson has said on Twitter this week that Lonzo Ball has the highest basketball IQ he's ever seen in a point guard? <laughs> He was hacked by Lavar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Lavar, Lavar is paying him off. <laughs> oh, I saw that man. and I was like, "Wait, ah, did, did he get? Did he get? Really? Did he get the which one he was talking about mixed up?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. exactly. I saw that. There was, and I was so like, many hype. There, there was so many hype. There was so much hype surrounding like all of them, wasn't there? Yeah, it's mostly because of dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but it's it's so funny that now Lamelo is the only one that. I feel like I feel like Lamelo had the least amount of push from his dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he looks. Yeah. His dad tried to say Leangelo is better than Lamelo at one point. Yeah, I do remember something like that. <laughs> it's probably because Leangelo was doing garbage at the time. He's like, yeah. "Here you go, son. You're you're a good basketball player. <laughs> you'll get a like, you'll get a two way contract." I've grown to res- like respect Lavar though, because like I hated him with a passion at the beginning. He was so obnoxious, but yes, the dude did raise crazy. yeah like two bona fide nba players and one who played uh, in the nba he played in the nba yeah he uh, for a bit he he, he, he raised three it, basketball yeah. players yeah so i mean no... pro, pros i mean that's not i mean he, he that's what he wanted to do and he did it and mm-hmm. i mean he he went about it in regards to like attention wise a different way but it worked he mm-hmm. he he businessman the shit out of them as well yeah, he built a brand right mm-hmm. yeah he built a brand exactly yeah yeah, absolutely. So you got to respect him for that. Absolutely. And, you know, you got to respect Lamelo's talent. You're like, when he first came, or both, both are talents. When they first came in, you're, they're kind of quite highly questionable. But, right. you know, Lamelo, anyway, proved himself. Yeah. And 
especially Lamelo, people were really, really skeptical on him. Like I remember when the when the draft was coming up, people were like, eh, "Is he just a dude that has a lot of Instagram highlights from high school games?" I like I remember that because we've been seeing shots of Lamelo forever since he's been mm-hmm. in high school. So it's, I, it, yeah, I feel like we've been waiting for to see him in the NBA for a long time. Mm-hmm. But and as much as we harp on Lonzo, I I'm a fan of Lonzo. I think he's a great player. I don't think he's the greatest basketball mind in a point guard. I don't think uh, Magic Johnson re- recalls Chris Paul, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to uh, to go on to some more trade targets uh, or trade topics, the T-Wolves have said that they're not interested uh, in any offers at all. They probably so, should be. They probably no. should be. <laughs> I know, but they probably, by the looks of it, I mean, I think they've proven that they don't want to be a good or competitive team anymore. So, <laughs> why would Those you days do that? are past. Ah, uh, that's not the point for us. We don't care. We're just that. here to have fun. Yeah. We just really wanted to be Timberwolves. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're furries. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, John Collins is another name that's been bounced around, uh, but that's the last one, and I don't think that's as likely now because the Hawks are actually on a nice uh, little little run for themselves. Mm-hmm. Let's get to this Deshaun Watson scandal. So, oh boy, let's let's see. The Houston Rockets quarterbacks quarterback faces sixteen civil lawsuits, all filed in the last week, containing detailed and graphic allegations of sexual assault. 16 rockets you said rockets it's so it's texans yeah. <laughs> it's up to 16 now like it's up to 16 like we, when we last talked it was 14 mm-hmm. when i checked the day before that it was 13 yeah she so like, like this is the first time i'm time hearing about like this, this whole story is this 16 different women now yeah different accusations so six, okay. 16 plaintiffs including three whose claims became public tuesday have accused watson of inappropriate conduct in suits filed by houston attorney Tony Busby. Busby. And this is the guy trying to get traded from the Texans right now, right? That's like, right. That's, that's right. Not yeah. Oh, man. That's not good. Literally in the that's, last 20 days, every yeah. team in the NFL went like this. Yeah. That's what yeah, exactly. The Texans are shooting themselves in the foot so hard, like, are kicking themselves so hard now for not getting rid of Really, them though. Really, though. Yeah. yeah. That's brutal. Yeah. Who knows what happens with that? I think it's. I mean, it's appropriate to say that he's probably sidelined for oh, yeah. as long now, as that case takes. To be fair, he does play in the NFL. Good point. <laughs> this is true of he all may, sports. He may get a raise. <laughs> he, he yeah. Did, and yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the Patriots will take him in about a year. Oh, yeah, that, <laughs> and they'll win their absolutely. <laughs> they yeah. do not give a shit. Yeah, Robert Kraft will swoop in and be like, "We want this guy." Yeah. Okay. We'll revive his career. Yeah. <laughs> So they no pay shame. off all the victims, and then yeah. no one ever heard of it again. So this oh is a um, a quote from an NFL team executive that um, spoke anonymously to a reporter. If you're a team that had been interested in him, you had to do your own research into this with whatever resources you have. You had to do your own due diligence in the event that someone uh, one day picks up the phone and says they're ready to move him. So, like, yeah, so- teams are aware that if you're taking him on, uh, it's very possible that he'll be unable to play or surrounded mm-hmm. by drama. So is this a public case that started off with like one or two people, and then because they came forward more, came forward, and, and is that what is that is that the type of th- uh, situation that's happening here? The thing kind of tidal waves. I, I think I was first aware of it mm-hmm. when it might have been. Yeah, it might have been when one person came forward, and then day okay. after day, it's like two more, four more. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. No, because I was just kind of curious because, like, yeah, it's for, for yeah. I thought because I only only heard of it today when you guys said like fourteen, and I was like, wow, that's that's it's, it's I don't know what are the chances of I'm not da- I'm not doubting in any no. way or trying to so, so, but like fourteen right off the bat, how do fourteen people it get wasn't together? Right. Yeah, but it like, wasn't it's, all it's, at it, once. That makes sense, and I don't know. I mean, when you get up that high in number, uh. I mean, you got trouble. Like, like, you, you, you <clears throat> lose the benefit of the doubt as Deshaun Watson more and more. I mean, this right. is mm-hmm. just one person that happened to have or two people that might be trying to, and one person trying to ride along and try and get in on it. This is like some, you know, you know, you do have, you do have athletes. Like, we can't 
say they don't get blackmailed and mm. miss miss yes. miss miss um we talked about patty know, kane last week i believe yeah i mean stuff like that like uh, different weird stuff like that but i mean six fourteen, even I mean, even lower than that multiple win but like that high number i mean you can't i don't know i don't i don't think how could you side with Deshaun at this point? I it's mean, not it's, just a red flag. It's, it's like it's it, yeah, ten yeah. red flags. <laughs> that's uh, that's a whole lot of everything. That's uh, it's, yeah. It's so upsetting to me as a fan. It's so upsetting because first I had to deal with him being, you know, uh, taking off all Texans representation off his social media and having to deal with that. Him being an incredible athlete, he, he's like a relatively quiet dude in all of everything that we've seen so far, and then this bomb. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think we're starting to see more and more. He's starting to peel back the covers. He's like an onion a little bit, you know, or yeah. peel back the layers. <laughs> like an onion. It's like he's Shrek like, quote. He's yeah. like a jawbreaker. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, jawbreaker. A... Oh, it's another color. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's another civil suit. But it's just, it's just, it's like, it's another color, but they're all just different shades of shit brown. They get shit yeah. <laughs> there you go. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's unfortunate. He's starting to it's starting to more. I don't know between like the whole breakdowns and him sitting so fat, want to trade it and quitting and this now. I mean, we're starting to get a better picture painted of Deshaun. Like you said, he's a quiet dude, so it's hard to really know him. And unfortunately, for he him, flashes I guess, people. To uh, yeah. to to close it out. Apparently, you know what it, what it came down to. I won't go into too much detail because there is just like uh you know there's uh, there's graphic reporting out there, but it's it's one of those things where like. He's called someone for a for a massage, and then you know, did the whole close the door and if you do this, I'll give you this. Blah blah blah. That's essentially what, what most of them are. Why don't you just friggin' go to a parlor, a happy ending parlor? That way you know you're getting it for sure. Don't yeah. put someone in that friggin' situation. Yes, like yeah. all the things we're hearing <laughs> are just so greasy. And it, it's Drive across the border to Nevada. I have go to Vegas by. Yeah, really though. I have a Deshaun Watson jersey. And I'm like, I look at him like, am I gonna wear that? And, like, I don't, I don't know if I am. I'm kind of ashamed to wear it now. I got to be, be honest, honest. A- Alex. Alex, it's really easy. All you have to do is take off a few letters, and you can <laughs> actually pay to only put two on, and you can put Watt. There, you, well, he's got. And then you, have, but then <laughs> but but I'll have a legacy friend. jersey. So use a legacy jersey. And JJ Watts the man. Yeah, you only got to put a couple <laughs> letters. That's right. All right, we're going to get back to where we're going to move on to a exciting segment that we started last week is it nasty or is it nice (laughs) (laughs) this is the (laughs) nasty or nice segment where we talk about branding (laughs) kits jerseys emblems i really enjoyed that professional soundbite that was amazing <laughs> it was really good thank you it's just nasty <laughs> or not or it's just not <laughs> all i can see is alex in a robe sitting in like a high chair by a fireplace having a whiskey a he's having a whiskey, having a whiskey. <laughs> eating some yeah with the fire <laughs> crackling this, yeah. the, book, the book in his hand the, yeah. the whiskey in the other leather bound yeah. books and and crackers, mahogany cootery board <laughs> Uh, I didn't life. see you there. <laughs> Time for another segment of Nasty or Night. Yeah, I got, we got to do that. We got to do like a, a visual stinger. That'd be great. Well, I didn't know we got <laughs> Sean Connery to do that. <laughs> is it nasty? <laughs> or is it nice? So, yeah, we take a, a bunch of. We discuss branding, uh, team kits, team emblems, and uh, basically isolate a nasty one or a nice one. So each of us has a nasty and a nice let's get it started with fred do you have a nasty to start us off with for the nba i was thinking about it actually i remember i was looking it up there uh a while back or what was that yesterday and i think uh i'll go with my nice off the bat first yeah sure let's start with the nices i'll Um, go with the nice he and, asked uh, you for your nasty first follow okay. the damn rules <laughs> no you go ahead with your nice if you want the to we can start with no? some nice Okay, I'm gonna go with the nice because it's the easiest one for me, and I th- I love the Celtics jerseys. Which nice ones and are easy, man. Just the, like oh, the you, like what you're used to seeing. Just uh... yeah, yeah. No retros or no old school, but for sure. And uh, yeah, so I think that's the best. I, I don't know what it is. The the logo, maybe the whole the whole green, everything. Yeah, the emblem's so, awesome. Or the cord. The is emblem awesome. is so nice. Their hardwood is like iconic. So yeah. 
That's a yeah. great choice. The whole thing for they your, do, uh, yeah. for your nice. That's what I'm going with. Come back to me on my nasty. I'm Will gosh, do. I still haven't decided. <laughs> oh, I see what you were doing, you skeezy bastard. <laughs> Scallywag. Tyrell, do you have a Fred, nice? This is Alex. Wait, before you, Tyrell, go ahead. This is like when the teacher yeah. comes around asking if you did your homework. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! This totally is. This is exactly as it. Right as, soon as, as soon as you brought up the segment, I just went straight to the iPad. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have one? Uh, uh, do you have a nice uh, Tyrell? Oh man, there's so many clean logos in the NBA, but it's true. I think my all-time favorite is actually. I think I'm wearing it right now. One sec. Ooh, I know what it is. Oh shit. <laughs> oh yeah, Vancouver Grizzlies. Beautiful. Cool. Yeah. Fantastic. Love those I colors. Love, love the colors. Love the logo. And for close seconds, I always like you know the classic retro raptors ah, yeah. everyone hates it but i don't know i, I love that you had to shout it out and i was gonna say it <laughs> the um <laughs> yeah and i love the uh, the old grizzly like palm in the ball i love it yeah it's yeah. really cool and the yeah the colors they they're after doing throwbacks to that with uh, memphis and it's really nice uh do you want to go into do you want to segue into yours josh you're nice yeah i was good he, you said exactly what i was i was saying i, I love the the old raptors one and just as a funny like historical thing about that it is when the Raptors became a team. I don't know. You guys probably already know this, but like when the Raptors became a team, they were named the Raptors after all different team ideas, just because of the popularity of of Jurassic Park at the time. Right? Sure it was a bit of a gamble. It was they, a bit of a gamble. They actually did, and uh, I'm gonna trust him because he's he's. I mean, he was a good guy. He's a pretty trustworthy guy and stuff like that. Um, he's, he's from Toronto or a, a, a guy I went to school with, I did music and recording yeah. arts with, and, uh, he was, uh, he was growing up as a kid in Toronto and everything like that when the Raptors were coming in, they were actually doing a contest, kind of a contest kind of idea of what to name the team. Right. And like, they'd pick like the top three ideas or so many ideas. And like the Raptors was one of them that came out of it. And I guess probably one that had a lot of backing anyways. Yeah. But, uh, he actually had one too. One of his, uh, submissions actually got a lot of steam behind it. Uh, was the, the Toronto Spiders? Spiders. Yeah, I think it was something like that on that lines. But yeah, so yeah. I mean, there was there was a lot of fan involvement with I think a, the naming and branding of the Raptors. So and like you were, said, Josh. Yeah. Dinosaurs were popular then. They were. They were super <laughs> popular. But the funny thing about it is, you look now and how how well the logo and also the team name has just aged. Oh, it's great. Yeah. You wouldn't say it now, and it's actually pretty cool. It's classic. Right? Like back then, I'm sure it kind of made there was a lot of people that probably would have thought it was a little gimmicky, right? It was like, oh, you're coming out at the same time as Jurassic Park. It was like peak, you know, dinosaurs are popular. Like Mitch said, oh, yeah. they went with the dinosaurs, Toronto Stegosauruses. <laughs> yeah, they went with the dinosaurs, <laughs> Toronto Trash Pandas. <laughs> Isn't that what people wanted? Like at one point, I thought that would be perfect. The, yeah, yeah, like the raccoons, that'd be great. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. The coon. Oh, no, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you say raccoons? No, I can't say what I was going to say. You were just referencing You were referencing South Park, for clarification. You were referencing <laughs> South Park. Um, <laughs> Mitch, what is your nice? Uh, so, just to kind of piggyback on Josh and Tyrell, so uh, the... I guess it's it's just a '90s kid thing again. I guess it's almost. I guess branding works as a kid because it does. the it really those does. logos stick in your head. Yeah. So the, the old Raptors logo, uh, I love. I actually too really like the rebranding they did the last few years with just the ball and the claw mark Raptor claw yeah. marks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that was so simple and well done. And it just it came across beautifully. That's genius. Like that logo is genius. I love it. It is. Simple, and right? there's so many things you can do with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other one I was looking through the logos, and I didn't realize. I, I guess because it doesn't get as circulated as many as much as the um, as much as it other logos because of the team. And I mean, we were just kind of shitting all over them <laughs> earlier. But I love the Minnesota Timberwolves new logo, the one, the round one with the wolf and the basketball is like the moon. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Uh, I re- I really like that logo. Interesting. I actually I like, the like their co- classic like the logo too. too, with the stupid cheesy wolf over the woods. Oh yeah, like really cheesy looking. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, we were talking before. We uh, both of us really are into the the circle logos. Yeah, and that's the thing. But circling back, uh, circling back to <laughs> bouncing, <laughs> bouncing the ball. <laughs> Guys, we're so friggin' funny. Um, <laughs> the, the the raptor ball. They did. They have a nice circle logo with that one as well in the middle. And it's just like mm-hmm. Toronto Raptors around it. I don't yeah. know. I just, like I said, you can do so many things with it. It's beautiful. Uh, 
Oh no, sorry, go ahead, never mind. We're not at that. We're no. not nasty yet. Okay. Uh we'll get to nasty. Um now I'm going to say for my nice, I might have to drop a link here real quick. But it's the Brooklyn Nets um twenty nineteen City Edition jerseys. So this is something what they they called Brooklyn Camo. I think it looks oh, yeah. gorgeous. Like I love it so much. Where's the link? It's one of those patterns. Camo? It's one of those patterns that just reminds you of bus seats. <laughs> is that the one? Is, is it on the on the side? It's on the side, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's their it's their city edition jersey. I'm sure if you if you look up Brooklyn 2019 city and edition. The and the is the is actually okay. Anyway, there's two versions I'm looking at. There's it's, it's not the one where like it says Brooklyn Nets and it's right edgy, is it? I'm go no, that's this year's. I'm gonna drop it in the okay. chat, and uh, it it was. Uh, there's a picture of D'Angelo Russell wearing it, and they they're after wearing it a couple times, and I think they've actually like put it on their court as well. Oh, I just I love okay. it. I think it looks really nice. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, so now I know the ones. I see the one you're talking oh, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's for me. Uh, not necessarily an emblem, but uh, I thought that's ah. one of the that's one of the kits that I thought were super super uh, nice looking. Qu- question. Yeah. So the one one of the ones that are coming up that I'm looking at it says what is bed. Stewy, S T U Y. Yeah, it's a. Uh, that's, it's it's a Brooklyn city or something. It has some relation with uh, Biggie Smalls. Not exactly oh, okay. sure, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, I think I'm too I'm too white for that. I sound, by the sounds of it. <laughs> that Brooklyn jersey too. I I love the threads that were made by someone who looked like it was like a toddler. I think it might have been 2021 or 2020 city edition too. Yeah. Like where there's just random like I don't even know if it's like brackets and then yes, it's like that's the, the one that Mitch one. talked about. It's yes, it's yeah. like maybe B K L N or B P B K L Y N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all like different colors. Every like everyone like ragged on it whenever I'd watch them on TV, but I thought it was really good. Yeah, they uh, they got some nice rebranding ever since they went to Brooklyn. I think I've I've never been like um, really actually yes no. Well, let's get to uh, let's get to the nasty. Let's go to Mitch. What do you got for your nasty? Oh man, dude! The NBA are after pumping out some shitty friggin' logos. They really Holy are. Crap. And, and <laughs> kits like who? So I went with logos. I didn't do kits. Okay. Um, I have a few though, man. There's some rough ones, and you're probably gonna have to go <laughs> back through them. So, one is the '60s Celtics logo, the leprechaun. <laughs> I see it. I don't think I, I'm not sure if I've ever seen that. Whew, that's awful. That's bad. The other one, and I don't know if they were the Detroit Pistons then, but uh, it's the 40s Pistons logo. 40s Pistons. Not- notably the one they used from the 40s to 41 to 47. 40s, 40s Pistons jerseys. <laughs> I'll have it's to the, haul the, it up on the, the street. The logo. I don't know if they use it on the jersey, but they use it as their <laughs> logo. It's like a robot Piston man. <laughs> interesting that's definitely, that's definitely another one that i haven't seen i thought you were talking about the horse no 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 back further than that but anyways <laughs> you got another one and the last one which is straight up freaky is the, <laughs> is the cincinnati royals logo cincinnati royals <laughs> just there's, there's one that's the because they used to be they're the Sacra- sacramento kings now which you can see what the oh, logo is yes translate. that's terrifying yeah. then, but then there's this creepy basketball dude that's face terrifying. head thing. So that one's uh, those are my three, and I couldn't touch. They all crack me off. <laughs> They're so bad. Yeah, that's good. That's good. One thing I do want to say too, I was going to say with the nasty. Uh, I don't necessarily hate it or anything, but it irks me. And I know it it, it does get a lot of love, but there's something about it that irks me. Is the U the Utah Jazz's logo? Mm-hmm. The music note, I mm-hmm. think, can be cleaned up so much better. It looks so awkward to me, and, it, and I think it could look so much sexier. I'm with you. Be, you... Uh, look at the blues in the NHL. Just, exactly. just like that's a sexy logo, and like, yeah, yeah Utah's. Uh, I, it could be something that we're missing with it. Maybe some kind of yeah, reference in there. Who knows? Mean. But it, yeah, it's it's very awkward looking. Fred. Yeah. Homework time. Yeah. Okay, I'm going with Ken. <laughs> I'm gonna go with kit instead of logo. All right, let's go. And for me, I hate these jerseys. I think they're garbage. And it's the Cavaliers uh, jersey, the old yellow and like red. 
Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. That's oh my awful god, colors. they are the worst. Just awful. Yeah, they're. I can't. I can't... Like it's all I... semi pro. Yeah. The Will Ferrell <laughs> playing basketball. Yeah. Like... If if not that one, I was also thinking for logo the old Jazz with just the. Uh... the oh, sorry, the Spurs. Sorry, the Spurs. Oh. With just the spur. Yes, man. I hate that jersey or that logo too. Wait, just the spur. <laughs> just the spur. Just the spur. Yes. <laughs> Tyrell, what's that your would nasty? Be mine. My nasty. I'm gonna go with like something more recent, and I hate to say it because I love the team back then, but mm-hmm. I think it was like 2008, 2009 Phoenix Suns, the like the basketball with like oh. the flames shooting out the side. You know what I'm talking about? I think I do. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's just. Oh so yeah, that is awkward. Yeah. Was that their '90s yeah. logo? You know what it is, Tyrell. Uh, no, not their '90s one. I, you could notice this, but you might have. You might not. It's a phoenix. Oh okay. no! It Being is. reborn in a. No, song. it isn't. Yes. One second. Yes, it is. It's like the, oh, it's like the it bear. Totally is. It's like the Minnesota. Uh, God damn it! You just maybe I like this now. I don't know. <laughs> this is a Minnesota Wild incident. Yeah. yeah. It's still garbage. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's still fun. garbage. I don't like it at all. And I got one that's like divisive, but the We Believe Warriors logo. I don't think it's nasty, but. The one where the war, like the little dudes hold electrical. I think it's oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's nostalgia speaking, but I love that. I love the the kit. I love the logo. I love everything about that team. Oh, so that's not your nasty? Well, no, the Phoenix one was, but right. this one's kind of like it's it's kind of nasty, kind of nice. Right. So that's like that's like everyone else is nasty, but you're like it's something that you like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The yeah. colors are kind of awkward. The co- everything's kind of awkward about it, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's very it's strange. Trip. It's a very strange logo. A very strange emblem, rather. Um, Josh, did we get your nasty? I'm not going to spend too much time about it on this one because we've already it. talked about this particular logo. Make it succinct. But I just want to re. I just want to re uh, insinuate how much I think that the six, like the the seventy sixers. Oh, yes earn jersey yes just shit no that's <laughs> like i hate it <laughs> and i was actually uh i was tempted to bring that one up as well that one is yeah. that one is straight up awful it's terrible if, uh, if they yeah. learned anything they should have either tried harder or not tried at all yeah just <laughs> just come out with a blank jersey it's like just perfect <laughs> you did so good. I, I don't know i guess because i i mean it makes sense i mean how 76ers what can you make as a logo with 76ers you know you what take, i mean you take a seven and you put a six beside it but i mean i don't know i think Earth. at the same time i don't when I, when I, <laughs> barkley barkley didn't Get like that <laughs> uh when i don't know when i think philly i don't think of the liberty bell so i don't know why no, they keep going back to the liberty bell yeah and i actually like i'm this is one of those probably divisive things too but i actually like philly philly's uh branding at the moment like their standard branding i i think their uh, emblem looks kind of nice while we're on the topic of philly though there was one it was like it was kind of awesome kind of like okay lo- uh, like logo but i think a lot of people really like it they used to it was one of a th- and it wasn't what was his name was it thomas edison i think it was thomas edison oh i think oh, i was like, I see dribbling him. the basketball in a 76ers jacket <laughs> 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 Yeah, I did see That's that. That's brutal. Yeah, I like because uh, they had the uh, the Iverson kind of branding for a little bit, and then uh, they went back to their classic, which I prefer to be honest. Um, so that was Josh's nasty, and what's my uh, nasty? So for my nice, I started with the Brooklyn Nets, and uh, for my nasty, I'm going with the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because I caught myself when I was explaining it earlier. Uh, there is a terrible kit from the Brooklyn Nets, and sending it along there in the uh, in the chat there now. But it is their um, special edition jersey that they're wearing this year. Harden has been seen wearing it multiple yeah, times. It's, it's awful. It's awful. Like, it hurts my eyes. Yeah. I hate like the gradient. The color gradient is off. Honestly, gradient is it bad don't that I work. don't mind that. I I don't mind it either. Actually, like no, 
No, gradients, <laughs> gradients on sports jerseys. I'm not a fan at all. What was it? The Burger King jersey we were talking about last night. Uh, yeah, yeah, I the, love the LA I, Kings. I really like the Nets uh, lettering mm, on that jersey, I, I the too. red. I yeah. like how that pops. The, the gradient, yes. Yeah. I could do without the gradient. If they went like just like that pale blue yeah. and the red lettering, those would be dope jerseys. Yeah, yeah, the yeah the gradients kind of kind of weird, but yeah, everything else about it, I'm I'm into. Reminds me of like uh, a, um, a popsicle. Why, I'm saying the same thing, actually. <laughs> I'm waiting for a team to do a Rocky jersey pop. in the style of remember those cups, the '90s cups with that like green, swirly, purple, green logo on it. Those classic '90s design on the uh, plastic cups. A Spurs. You know oh yes, yes, yes. I do. I know what you're I talking wanna, about. And the team needs to have that kind of design going through their jersey. Yeah, I'd be down. I'd, I'd be totally down. It, it's like the marketing. It's like I'm so the, lost. It's like the Brooklyn. Um, I see what... It's like it, yeah, the it's like disposable I'll... styrofoam cups. Yeah, I'm sure if you search that up, teal I'll, I'll disposable you, cups. Gosh. But was that? I'll send so, it to you. We'd be totally okay, down for something like that. Uh, it, it's like the Brooklyn uh, bus logo. We got all kinds of weird logos bouncing. Yeah, it's a very bus logo ish kind of thing. Uh, while you're while you're queuing that up, we're going to uh, hop to one more topic for this week, and uh, we'll get you to lead us into it, Josh, if you don't mind. Ooh. This is Did they forget about Sports it? versus Gord Miller. Okay, uh, so Mitch, <laughs> Mitch might have a little bit more to say on it. I uh, I almost rather not see anything the way that that friggin' way it is now. It's so um. It's so divisive, and it's kind of funny that we're saving it for the end. Because mm. <laughs> uh, I guess Gord Miller from TSN decided he wanted to um, he wanted to make his thoughts public about Barstool Sports, and I guess how they how they I more so I guess how he doesn't want to associate with them. Yes, just for what he believes they stand for. Yeah, I don't. So, go ahead, Mitch. No, I was just say I mean, like he didn't fully go out of his way to like. He Sean wasn't... Barstool. He was doing a Q&A while he was bored or waiting for something or getting yeah. on a flight. Yeah, Twitter so, Q&A. Yeah, so someone asked him, when's he going on Spitting Chicklets? And he says, well, he said, I love those guys, but I, I don't really want to associate myself with Barstool. And uh, that kind of... Even this... just, even that quote at the end of the day, like, I I take that as it's not even necessarily with the with the spit and chicklets guys. It's more more so with what's his name Dave Portnoy. Oh, Dave then, Portnoy, yeah, and, Dave which, Portnoy. and that that's exactly what it is. It's barstool. It's not spit and chicklets more. It's barstool as a whole. I think I saved a few of his tweets here actually. So yeah, so like someone so someone said, "What are you guys going to be on spit and chicklets?" Is I like I like those guys a lot, but anything to do with barstool is a no go for me. Mm. And. And he said, like, further on, so my comment today about not wanting to associate with Barstool Sports has prompted a lot of texts, emails, calls. The response has been incredibly positive, especially from female. Um, and I don't fear my for my ignorance, but I don't know what BIPOC colleagues mm-hmm. uh, who okay. have been what? No, I said it's all good. Okay, uh, it's, a, it's black. It's black and interracial people of color. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm pretty ignorant. Uh, colleagues who have been afraid to speak out about their issues with bar stools and sites like that, he said in, in yeah. brackets. Uh, then he goes on to say, "My problem with bar stool is the historic history of unappel unappal. Oh my God, Gord Gord Miller's too smart for me. He used big words. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's why. That's why I'm a bar stool guy. <laughs> <laughs> a, a history of unappel unapologetic misogyny." Is it misogyny or misogyny? Misogyny, <laughs> misogyny yeah. <laughs> Which you're getting Racism. progressively angry as you're reading this. Xenophobia <laughs> um, <laughs> and the repeated condoning of non-consensual sex. If not wanting to associate with that makes me part of cancel culture or constitutes virtue, virtue signaling or being woke, I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As a public service, here are some alternative, def- alternative definitions of those terms, yeah. which are often used, misused in the mm-hmm. public sphere. Which then he kind of went. On, he went on a bit of a cringy, a cringy rant where he he to start defining cancel culture, right, and woke, and all this stuff, which yeah, is kind of like, weird. Is that necessary, Gord? No, I don't. Mm. I th- I think he probably went on further than he needed to but he right. wanted to hammer home a point I think, yeah and then it was at that point it was like you made your point like, <laughs> yes 
Yeah, but, and, and, and just the main one right there, like, you could have stopped there. For sure. yeah, 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 like, he's just going to end up losing fans on one side or another if he just keeps going on. So He's, he's going to lose fans either way, but... But even bringing up that whole, um, just that whole topic is, is kind of exactly that. Like, no matter what, it's so divisive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think I made this comparison. I don't know if it was with, like, on the pod last week, but... No, it was in the chat, because I brought it chat? off in the chat, yeah. Because... I mean, like, it's almost like American politics. It's literally just like American politics. It's either one side or the other. It's so right. divisive. Right. It's like, bam, bam. Like, there's no middle ground. There's no, like, people it's... don't have the conversation and talk about it. It's either and... you're with them or you're against them. And and Dave Portnoy sometimes fuels that. He does. Oh, absolutely. He's, oh, my God. Like... He's, a, he's, one, it's his personality and how he's always done things. And mm-hmm. he's not going to change because that's how he wants to. And that's how it is. Two, he knows it gets attention, media, and marketing. That's, and that's probably that makes his game biggest marketing yeah. tactic. Yeah, right. And that um, makes him happy. I think Jordan Miller was just trying to make the point known with, by also trying to take a moral high ground. Yeah, like he was just trying to be very like non uh, abrasive, but just be like, "This is my belief," and blah. he just made it known. My thought yeah. on it is, I I completely respect. Gord Miller and what he does and what he's done and continues to do. He's a great, great at what he does and we'll continue to listen to him. Yeah, and I, I get where he's coming from, especially like for me, for someone who I, I listen to Spit and Chicklets all the time. I, I enjoy Barstool's products, uh, products and some of their content. I'm not going to, I don't wave the Barstool flag. I'd never right. consider myself a yeah. stoolie. Yeah. yeah. Or, <laughs> and, and I'm not, and I can't say like Dave Fornoy can be, uh, uh, can be even a, a bit much for me. Right. Um, especially the way he gets on, but that's that's kind of the that's his that's in his mantra since day one. He's un, yeah. un, unapo- yeah. unapologetic in your face, and he's you know he got that Bostonian kind of mantra to him. I mean, he's just he's in your face kind of like that. He's he's not even technically. I don't even know. He's sh- I don't know if a lot of people know this, but he's not even full. I don't even full owner anymore. He's sold the majority of us. He's main his main role now is content moderator and creator and stuff like, like that. Dana Wade kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean that that's what the guy the guy is. He wants to this is still his baby, but at the same time he needs to feel hype and attention around it. And I don't blame him for biting back at Gord Miller either. Um uh, one I mean, Gord Miller has expected. Yeah, Gord yeah, Miller right. has Gord Miller has a following and a more following than other people. He's a media guy, so you need to defend yourself. And when you call something you created like misogynistic and xenophobic and racist and all this stuff, I mean, those are pretty harsh. Yeah, words to call something. Right. And if you don't defend that against that, I mean, you can't just lay it down and take those those yeah. labels. And I don't. I understand where it comes from. Barstool was a very rough white male mm. college frat brand when it started out. Yeah. It's, that's that's how it started. That's what it was. It's you take it or leave it. But Barstool has also evolved as a company from what they who they employ, what kind of content they put out. And I mean they still they still are on a spectrum and on a side of a fence on the content and how they do things about it. But I mean it's the kind of thing is, I mean, you don't have to like, you don't have to list them as if it's not your style, it's not your style. Barstool is barstool. If you don't like it, go listen to something else. It's just, I don't know. It's just, I think because um, Spit and Chicklets have literally gotten every walk, pretty much all walks of earth on their podcast by now. Right. Yeah. From some of the roughest guys around the edges, like to Bob McKenzie, who comes on their podcast all yeah. the time. Yeah. I mean, that's I'm sure uh, very he, I'm sure Bob's views don't completely align with you know Barstool's overarching personality, no. right? So no, I yeah. mean, and you don't have to. I Gord, I think too, may have put himself. I th- I think I understand where Gord's coming from, and I respect his his opinions and values. The thing is, too, the way Barstool is as well. I mean, you get a lot of. I don't want. There's, I I, you, I think you're going exactly what I was gonna kind of bring up too. Like even just. <laughs> after that whole interaction, there was like a couple of the followers of Barstool that like- They'll just attack. Yeah, they'll attack. And, yeah, and, but they'll, they'll and attack Dave in Portnoy the plays way. into it. Yeah, yes. he plays into it because I think he finds it hilarious too he at does. the same time. He, he's kind of like, he's kind of like the Wicked Witch. Yeah, he's like, I put my Wizard dogs on, on The witch is dead. Yeah. 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 Oh, he's kind of like, he's like, fly my monkeys. And he like, <laughs> <laughs> do his bidding and run off. Yeah. Because there were like people that. that were responding to it, and they're like, "Dave, like, who do I got to attack? Do you yes. want me to get them? I'll get them." 
and you're like, oh my god, that's like, the it's cringy. Kind of, but... It is cringy as hell. Some guys buy way too into it, but that's the kind of way Barstool is. Barstool is kind of a bit of a culture uh, way too. People have bought heavy into how Barstool is as a culture, and the way Dave Portnoy interacts, I think social media wise, you get a lot of people that feel really per- personal and connected to Barstool and Dave himself. Right. So yeah. when you when you say those kind of comments about Barstool and stuff like that, they I think a lot of people personally. they take it very personally. Yeah. yeah. And it's... then then you get that the type of person that. Stu- oh, you would call a stoolie <laughs> not afraid not afraid to go on twitter and say what they want to say it's a big uh it's a big culture thing and uh yeah definitely definitely completely divisive one way or the other it's uh it was an interesting these, thing to see uh i've seen these cups at zellers <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't even see the cup all you see is the streak either way it would make a great jersey let's get let's get on to the last segment all right. <laughs> hey bro Ooh. Hey! I like the pick and roll. I like the give and go. Answer the question. Freak out, yo! So, the on the pick even. and roll this week, we have Brian Scalabrini. There's a video that went kind of viral of him being cha- challenged by a high school kid, 1v1. Uh, for those who don't know Brian Scalabrini, he's probably the whitest M- NBA player you've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> schools the dude completely. Uh, shuts him out in a 1v1. It's a pretty cool video. You want to look he it up? played him pretty hard. He did. <laughs> uh, Montreal Canadiens have brought COVID to the North Division. All games uh, have been canceled for the week. That's a pretty. Uh, that's a pretty crazy one. Got to say. Uh, they were I doing know. so well. Damn it, Fred! I know. Yeah. I'm mad at <laughs> you. And all I, people, the two I don't, Finnish players. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I don't think it's been. Uh, I don't think it's as bad though. Like I know they've. We got to remember too. Like the rules in Canada are different than in the states. Like, I think uh, solely because, like, you know, the contact tracing, the way that it's been, like, even thus far, the fact that we've only heard that it's two players, I think, is a good thing. Because mm-hmm. I think it is actually kind of contained. They're just going the extra mile and holding holding it in. Like, the way that I look at it, maybe, like, you know, after the, the rest of the games this week, like, they're just back to normal. Except, you know, you'll have Armia and Kakanyemi out for right. maybe another week. Right? The way, that was pretty crazy to see that it's been shut down for a week, I got to say. Yeah. Um, Westbrook, it was in a game against the uh, the Kings. It was a one possession game. He had the inbound pass with seven seconds left. He heaved it across the court, nowhere close <laughs> to any uh, to any <laughs> other doing? person on the Wizards. Uh, Westbrook's having a weird season. That's all I'm gonna say about. But that. like, but like, but like, that's the excuse. <laughs> it's like he's just like he like gets the ball. He's like, but the. F- <laughs> like, he's having a weird season. Yeah. He's just like he's being a weird guy. And and like... the, the best part about the clip is he does it, and the team, like I think Rui Hachimura and a couple other guys are looking at him, like the young guys, just like, <laughs> like what did you just do? And Westbrook stays there. He's like, <laughs> like, is, like, is he upset that no one caught his ridiculous pass, or is he calculating his big mistake? Like. It's this is or his, a bit of both. or his next move or his next move. He just runs <laughs> off the court, <laughs> um, right out the building. <laughs> yeah, he's running. Uh, last on the pick and roll, we got Stephen Silas. Uh, after their twentieth straight loss, uh, I got it, it. It was very upsetting. Stephen Silas is one of the most cheerful, like very positive coaches. Uh, not too many coaches would have handled that twenty. Uh, in a row streak as well as he did but after the 20th loss in the press conference the the uh, appearance of pure defeat and yeah. emotion on on his face as he sat down and answered the questions was like i really felt it especially as a fan like holy crap did he look he look upset and you like like i feel bad for this dude the amount of shit he has to put up with like came into a terrible situation with james harden yeah, he was just plopped into an awful situation overall. It, going on that topic, like, <laughs> there's been, like, a huge kind of debate, especially this year with all, like, everything happened in the States, about coaching in the NBA, kind of, like, black versus white coaches and the opportunity they're given, you know, mm-hmm. and, and especially that league, like, dominated by African-American people. Right african-american coaches don't get the same you know advantage i I guess it seems as white coaches like you get steve nash who was like 
Yeah. Uh, you know, Steve, one of my favorite players ever, but he's never coached a day in his life, and he's plopped down. He's like, here's Kevin Garnett, here's James Harden, here's Kyrie. Have I know. fun. Yeah, in a, you know, you're not in New York coaching the Knicks per se, but it's still Brooklyn. It's still a huge market of basketball. And mm-hmm. he jumped the gun over the whole organization. And, yeah, just white guy, former player. I mean, he did. Yeah. Okay, he coached Team Canada in the FIBA, I think. <laughs> it's like, whoa. whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, crap. Ready for the NBA. <laughs> No, it, yeah, it's a sad because, like, you know, you got so many African American coaches who like had more experience, and he got the job over them. Yeah, and I find that they just have to work so much harder. You know, they getting, really do. Like getting a James Hardenless Houston team, like what chance did you have? Honestly? Yeah, and I think the T Wolves have done something similar recently with their uh, recent hire as well, jumping the gun on a bunch of. Uh, people of color that have way better qualifications within their organization and it's i feel like the consensus at least is positive with steven silas people are like don't touch that dude man like let him work with some talent once you put talent there don't Mm -hmm. like the 20 the 20 streak it's 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 humongous but it is it is a bump considering all the shit that happened at the beginning of the season and the roster that they're having to deal with yeah and, all that, that kind of stuff. and the, the roster that he has right yeah that is, yeah. just doesn't make sense to me why they're that you know i guess like boundary and stereotyping would go on you know i just i don't i don't get it i mean think about all the best players now for the last god knows how many years i mean you think that would eventually transition to the best coaches that know the best you know skills and best everything but like it's still a common i don't know, deciding yep. factor for whatever friggin reason it's I, I, systemic right right yeah and yeah. i mean it's unfortunate but it, it, it comes down to ownership right and the decisions yeah. that, that they make and who they want to hire right so it's it's really unfortunate especially for a league that still prides itself on being so progressive so I mean, look at Doc. Doc's a boss. Doc Rivers. Yes, right. and he's dude is so smart. Dude is so well spoken. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I he's understand. I, Doc Rivers yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Um, I guess that pretty much wraps it up for this week of the Jersey Tuck podcast. We had some fun this week. Uh, definitely, I I definitely have a lot of fun with the Nasty or Nice each week. We are going to return to that, but which league will it be? You'll just have to tune in Ooh. next week to find out. Um, subscribe to the podcast. <laughs> follow the podcast on Spotify. Subscribe on YouTube. Send us a tweet every now and then at the Jersey Tuck. Watch those Crack That Pack videos. But uh, with that, that wraps up the podcast. Any closing thoughts, boys? Next week, we look at KHL jerseys. <laughs> hey. yeah. actually, actually we're gonna do nba part two because there's so many garbage stuff that we can go on one more jersey or one more logo before go we for it. before go we for end it. Go for it. in my research no this is actually this is a good one um there's one logo that has not changed since 1965 and that oh yeah chicago bulls yeah. i was gonna say that's it's, bulls yeah it's been the I exact saw, same i saw that it's like I the habs not it's literally the <laughs> same logo yeah Crazy. there's no not even variations the same logo then mm. that's the definition of a legacy logo right there like habs or blackhawks you know, yeah. the same thing there's just jump change maybe it's a mm-hmm. chicago thing Hey. Ah, yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Fine, bro. Need a designer? Go to Chicago. All right, yeah. see you next week. White people. Sox, don't change it. Uh-huh. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. Peace. Bye.